in this topic we will be discussing one step of the stages of internationalization model and that step is the sales subsidiary step and we will be looking at how a sales subsidiary operates what type of structure is formed in a sales subsidiary which goes into the international business in this diagram you can see that there is the corporate executive and under that corporate executive there are departments of the organization there is finance department logistic department production department marketing and sales department and now you can see that the department of exports that is added in the organizational structure in the previous structure of the export department you remember that the sales came under the the foreign sales came under the marketing and sales department now you can see that one department of exports is added in this particular step and then there is the human resources department and human resources department is again having both the function of controlling the human resource of the parent country and controlling the human resource of the sales subsidiary so you can see in this diagram that under the exports department there are two heads number 1 is direct exports and number 2 is the sales subsidiary so it is possible that in an organization you are selling your products through directly exporting your product to a foreign country and you have established a sales subsidiary in another foreign country so if you have both those functions operating in your organization then you will have this type of structure if you are not going for direct exports you are establishing sales subsidiaries throughout the foreign operations then direct exports department will not be operating so a uh, sales subsidiary will be working under your exports department why do you go for establishing a sales subsidiary in your foreign operations aap export se hi kaam kyun nahi chala lete uski wajah ye hai ki jab aap export kar rahe hain usme aapke liye uh, foreign agents काफ़ी प्रॉब्लम्स क्रिएट कर सकते हैं कोऑर्डिनेशन uh, के प्रॉब्लम्स हो सकते हैं आपको उनके कल्चरल प्रॉब्लम्स हो सकते हैं जो फॉरेन एजेंट्स हैं वो दे माइट बी चार्जिंग वेरी हैवी कमीशंस दे माइट नॉट बी टेलिंग यू द एग्जैक्ट सिचुएशन ऑफ द मार्केट यू कैन नॉट ट्रस्ट द फॉरेन एजेंट्स बिकॉज दे आर नॉट द पार्ट ऑफ योर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दे आर नॉट योर एम्प्लॉयज दे आर योर they they are your uh, selling agents so the problems which are faced by the foreign agents uh, force you to establish your international functions in the form of a sales subsidiary then you go for a sales subsidiary because you become more confident that okay your product is selling very well in a foreign market so rather than exporting your product it's better that you establish a sales subsidiary in the foreign market that would enhance your sales and that would enhance your image in that foreign country you also want to have a greater control over your foreign operations so agar aap apna hi department foreign country mein establish kar lete hain to jo foreign country mein ऑपरेशंस हो रहे हैं सेल्स हो रही हैं कस्टमर्स के साथ नेटवर्किंग हो रही है वो सब चीज़ें आपके डायरेक्ट कंट्रोल में आ जाती हैं जब आप एक्सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं तो ये सब चीज़ें आपके फॉरेन एजेंट के कंट्रोल में होती हैं जब आप वहाँ पे इस्टेब्लिश कर लेते हैं तो आपके कंट्रोल में आ जाती हैं सो यू हैव मोर कंट्रोल ओवर ऑल द फंक्शन ऑफ एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन दैट सेल्स सब्सिडरी डिपार्टमेंट एंड देन 
you may decide to give greater support to the export activity because you find that the export department is or the exports function is much more profitable and therefore you want to make it more highlighted in the functions of your organization. So these are the reasons why you go for establishing a sales subsidiary in the international context. The HR issues which are related with sales subsidiary management are that number one, you have a need for control and coordination. Now, if you have people who are operating in a foreign country, aapne ek apni sales subsidiary open kar li hai, wahan pe obviously aapne human resources ko hire karna hai, aapne unko uh, operations ko allocate karna hai, to aap aap ko coordinate karne ki zyada zarurat pesh aayegi. Then you have staffing needs and staffing needs mein you can go for two possibilities. You can go for an ethnocentric approach in which you hire your parent country nationals, PCNs, for that export function, for that sales subsidiary function. So, you can use your sales subsidiary in your country. So, you can assign your functions. Assign karte and then there is country, uh, country specific approach. Uh, in which knowledge of the foreign markets is very much important. So obviously, PCNs will not have the knowledge of foreign markets. You need to hire host country nationals, which are the ones who you to to hire karna padega. So that is country specific approach. Where you an ethnocentric approach, rakhte hai, wahan pe aap PCNs ko appoint karenge jahan aap country specific approach rakhte hain wahan par aap HCNs ko appoint karenge uh, actual example se pata ye lagta hai ke uh, zyada tar organizations ye koshish karti hain ke wo maximum PCNs ko yani ke parent country nationals ko appoint kare because wo unko zyada trust karte hain wo unko zyada jante hain aur wo apne uh, functions ko delegate karne mein confidence mehsoos karte hain. Now when you are appointing parent country nationals in a foreign country, you will have to go for the process of expatriate management. Jab aap apne mulk se, apne parent country ke logon ko foreign country mein bahir bhijwa rahe hain kaam karne ke liye, to aap ko unki expatriate management ke functions se guzarna padega aur aapko ye samajhna padega ke expatriate management ke kya issues hote hain unse aapko kis tarah se deal karna hai aur aapne apni parent country nationals ko kis tarah foreign country mein adjust karwana hai so expatriate management is a function which will be added when you uh, send your parent country nationals to foreign countries to manage your sales subsidiary 